What's up guys, Guillaume Zero and welcome back to Pro Soccer 2021 for the start of our Tour de France playthrough and I cannot wait. I cannot wait. The Tour de France is just around the corner in less than 24 hours when we have the Grand Départ uh, as I'm recording this. It probably just happened um, for those of you if you're watching on release day or on release time of this video. Uh, but yeah, I cannot wait. It's going to be, I hope... A great three weeks, maybe not the best of parkour, but a great fucking start list. And um, yeah, it's, it's just going to be unreal. And before we start, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss a single episode of this playthrough as we're going to go through the team selection. Team-wise, I nearly went with BNB at first, but then I realized that that team was quite a shit. Um, so I was going with Arkea Samzik. I had made the thumbnail. I was settled with it. And then... Then, then Mark Evanish joined the Canuck. So obviously, I had to take the Max Missile, the Max Express. We do have Julien Philippe, the world champion. He will be my GC end stage hope for, uh, for this race, but we're getting for the Canuck quick step. I want to try and take the Wolf Pack to a decent, decent position. Maybe not a GC win. It's going to be quite tough with the competition. But if we can get like 10 stage wins and the green jersey with Mark Evanish, let's sit up. And we start the Tour de France with a minus two on Julien Philippe. No ideal. Uh, we do start it in very wet conditions for the stage between Brest and Landerneau. We'll take a quick look at the profile, obviously, of this stage. Uh, a heady one with, at first, the Côte de Trébéolin. Then the Côte de Rosnoen, followed by a third cut, the Côte de Locronan. Uh, we'll have an intimate sprint with um, about 72k left to go in Pleben. Côte de saint rival And finally, the climb towards Landerneau. Um, 2.9 kilometers, an average just on the 6 with a max of 11.5. So not the easiest of, um, of climbs. So uh, we can take a first look at uh, the World Champ jersey of Julien Philippe, but also the new kits of some of the new teams. We have, for example, uh, Total Direct Energy or Total Energy with uh, the brand new kits here um, represented by Edval Boissenhagen. Um, there are also a few new kits that I haven't been able to add yet because they've not been made. Uh, that is the case, for example, of the Kubeka Asus team, which is now called Kubeka Nexto. Has the game changed there, potentially? Next hash. Kubeka Next hash. Uh, here you obviously have the new kit for Yombo Vesma. Like, the, the, the new kits, I've put them in the game. I think maybe the DB changed them as well. I don't know. Here's the Bora kit for Daniel Hoss. Um, as soon as there's new kits released, they will be in the save and I will make a video later on um, on how to have those new kits in your game so that you can have a, um, well, just, just a more realistic game, I guess. And we have our first crash in the Sour de France. Petr Vakoc, Greg van Avermaet, and Vincenzo Nibeli. Good start for the Thrallo. All right, and as uh, we've crossed the third cut of the Côte de Le Cronan, I figured it would be time to take a look at the breakaway. We have Yellow Wallace for Cofidis, Antoine de la Place for Arca Samzik, Michael Scher for H2R La Mondiale. Or H2R, no, H2R Mondiale Citroën, there we go. Uh, EBH for Direct Energy. And Ignatas Konevaloas, the latest champion of Lithuania. Four points for EBH in the mountain classification, meaning that mathematically he will be leading the uh, mountain classification tonight, unless um, I think Yellow Wallace gets first in Saint Rivoire and mainly also gets the yellow jersey, which will still mean that Boisnagen will be for the jersey. Much larger crash involving Enric Mas. He is the first GC leader to um, well, have fallen. David Formolo is there with Rui Costa, Rixabel, Guillaume Boivin, Barguil, and Garza Cortina. They're going to come back. Uh, three riders as well at the back. Victor Campenart um, following an incident. Thomas Dehens and Brian Cocard. And more crashes, more crashes. And this time, it is Ineos. Richard Carapaz. And he's being waited by Von Barle, Lucro, Castroviero, Gegenart, and Mehal Kotkowski. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Is the Peloton going to do anything? Yep. Jan Bevisma already putting the hammer down to try and put Richard Carapaz out of contention for the 2021 Tour de France general classification. Even more crashes. Nasser Bouani. I think Jakob Fulsang has been in, a, in an incident as well. I don't know where he would be. I think he's there, isn't it? Stefan de Bird. Uh, okay, now, I don't know where he is, but there, oh, there he is. Jakob Fulsang is the first withdrawal from the Tour de France. Mad. Mental. Okay. And in the meantime, 
I mean, I'm sorry, Richard Carapaz. I'm sorry, all of you lot, but I'm going to have to base because there's an intimate sprint coming up. And my aim is to get the green jersey back on the shoulders of Mark Cavendish on this Tour de France. So your boy will go for the jersey. We're going to take um, the position of Anthony de la Place here. Uh, any sprinter here? Oh, no sprinter went for it. Quite curious. No sprinter made a move. Interesting. Where's... Oh, Carapaz is coming back. Richard Carapaz has managed to come back in the first group. Nice one. And the day just keeps getting worse and worse for Victor Campanals. I mean, he crashed once. Crashed again. 34 kilometers remaining in this stage and we have no more breakaway. Mathia Cataneo has been pacing. Uh, I just want to lay down um, a, a, a normal tempo at the front. Um, not too harsh, but somewhat of a pace so that the pattern doesn't slow down. I was scared that they would completely uh, stop after um, um, catching Carapaz. Sorry, after allowing Carapaz to come back. Crash again, Sylvain Zilli in the peloton. Uh, crash on his own. Crash on his own. For the latest Swiss champion from Alpes in Phoenix. He is back on the bike. Another withdrawal. Brian Cocard. Brian Cocard withdrew. He was already at the back of the race. I believe he's had another crash. But I didn't know if there had been any, uh, well, any consequences. There are. There are. The French sprinter is out of the Tour de France. For, I mean, what? After 170 kilometers? That is an L. That is an L for the rider aiming to move towards all next season. Acceleration by Michael Woods in the um, penultimate uh, climb before Landerno. Okay. It's fine. For now, we're good. We're good. We're good. We can allow him to have some space. I'm guessing good is chasing him down. Of course, the home, uh, the homeboy of Brittany, of Brest, is out here. Uh, oh, we've got gaps. We've already got a few gaps here. Dan Martin, Gary Thomas. A few, a few good names have been dropped. Interesting. I talk about the former Dutch champion, Mathieu van der Poel. I mean, I expected it. I didn't know where he, when he would move, but I knew he would move eventually. There he goes. There he goes. Right, we'll have Kasper Asgreen take charge of this group. Where's Mikel Morkow? He's far he's behind, isn't it? Um, there's a lot of riders in A1, you know. 128 riders have been dropped already. That's a lot. That is a lot. That is a lot. Lucro struggling to uh, keep up. Can he, can he keep up? In the words of KSI, he cannot. And we've started the climb toward Lano. We have started the climb. All right. De Venance is going to lead Ballerini. Julien Lafilippe. I mean, Mark is there, but let's be honest. Mark is going to be vibing more than anything, right? I'm, I'm not expecting anything. Chris Froome is still there. Chris Froome has not been dropped yet. And you love to see it. Acceleration by Mathieu van der Poel again. Mathieu is strong today. Mathieu is quite strong today. Ballerini is going to try and chase. Where's Julien? Julien has been blocked by, by uh, Barguil and by Ballerini again. Oh my god, Roglic. Wow. Well, pretty much Roglic has destroyed everyone today. Jesus. Okay. I got... I think I got blocked, right? I think I got blocked. But... Unreal performance by Roglic today. Jesus Christ. And here's your first yellow jersey of this Tour de France. Primus Roglic, 7 seconds on Alaphilippe, 12 seconds on Woods, Ballerini, Godu, Valverde, and Tadej Pogacar. Uh, Molema dropped 19, Yates dropped 22. I mean, I would have liked to do um, maybe a bit better, if I'm honest. Maybe the minus 2 didn't help. I don't know. I mean, he starts off this Tour de France with a win. Can he retain the yellow jersey for 21 days? I mean, uh, he probably could, but let's be honest. There, there's a good chance that he will. Uh, but, I mean, I think other riders such as me or Tane Pogacar might try to, um, to see this differently. Uh, but a few riders have lost already some time today. Um, Garen Thomas is in P12. He's the first rider of the Ineos Grenadiers. Because Richard Carapaz lost 1 minute 30. Uh, Richie Porte lost more than, or nearly 2 minutes. Togo Gennart, 2 minutes 45 already. So, I believe that um, Geraint might be the leader of Ineos. Uh, also, some riders that lost um, some decent amount of time. Enric Mas, 50 seconds. Uh, I mean, I was going to say Chris Froome. I live in the past. But, uh, I, like, it's many Ineos, actually, that choked. Nairo Quintana, two minutes for Nairo Quintana today. Nevertheless, this is where we're going to wrap up this episode. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you didn't, please do leave a like down below. Make sure that you are subscribed to the channel to see the rest of the Tour de France with the Cologne Quick Step daily episodes on the stages of the Tour de France at 12 a.m. p.m. At 12 when you eat. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, and yeah, I'll see you tomorrow for stage number two of the 2021 Tour de France. My name is Guillaume. Have an amazing day. See ya. Pass me the funk, get your funk on, girl, and don't you ever let Pass me the go. funk. We're getting drunk in